By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an old school match between Mono White, White Weenie versus Atok Smash, an, a red Atok deck with, of course, tons and tons of artifacts. And this is actually the finals being played in the X Points monthly. And with me today is a co-commentator, a specialist of the format, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Sorry, Ken. I promise not to say that. Use that word, right? Uh, but welcome, <laughs> no. Ken, to the to the channel. Um, but you've played the format, yes? Yeah, yeah. I've I've actually uh, I've had middling success. I thought I was I thought I did much better in seven point. Um, X point's a totally different beast, though. It's it's super exciting, though. A tremendous amount of fun to play and. I, I think, uh, you know, it's it just like seven point. I don't think that it's been solved. It's a whole lot of fun. Uh, it's the same usual suspects are around lightning bolt, Savannah lions, a tog, but, uh, it, it adds an interesting dynamic when, when you have, uh, you know, restrictions on all the power people, people need to make some tough decisions. Cause I think that's really a key phrase you're using there is it hasn't been solved. And that's what makes it so interesting, right? And that the new cards get to see a chance to shine, just like with the seven point singleton format, actually, where all of a sudden I saw giant tortoise being a really good card. And actually, yeah, right? right? It's so cool. Like it is a good card, but I, I would never expect to see it in a, in a final match somewhere. So that that's so cool with these formats. Um, so yeah, before we go in and jump into the deck decks, uh, I would just like to point out for the viewers that as always, you can also skip that section uh, by checking the timestamps below and you'll see a timestamp uh, marked MTG Games. Click on there, that will take you straight uh, to the action so you can actually see the final straight away between Dave Firth Bard and uh, PJ Priestley, by the way, those are the two players in the final. Um, and also, if you want to know more about this specific format, so X points, I'll put a link to the Facebook group. They also have a really nice YouTube channel. So I'll put all those links and info in the description below. So if you want to know more about the format, check that. Um, and here, I think we're going to start with the deck deck. We're going to start with the deck of Dave Firth Bart, White Weenie. Here we go. And here we see the deck of Dave. So as you can see, it's White Weenie, right? A classic deck. And you can see those dice on there. They indicate the points, right? The certain cards have point value uh, allocated to them. And you can see Dave is playing with a lot of points and it's called X points. So X stands for 10. So you can spend 10 points in total. So for example, the Armageddon is one point, right? So you see three Armageddon. So he spent three points. He's got seven points left. Um, Ken, so what do you think of this deck? Um, I, I actually, it, it, it took me a while to... Uh, you know, the first time I looked at it, I thought, okay, it's it's just white weenie. But you look a little bit closer, and there's some really interesting choices that he made. Um, and, and we'll see how this plays out. He's got the, the Armageddons, which we know what Armageddon does in white weenie. He goes one drop, two drop, one drop, two drop, and then he wants to shut the door with the Armageddon. Yeah, right. Get um, get get lots of cheap creatures out. Shut the door with Armageddon and swing. Shut the swing, door swing. with Armageddon as soon as the opponent's able to come up for air after they've recovered from an Armageddon. Uh, you know they 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 realize that they're at you know nine life, eight life, and and then they're in panic <laughs> yeah. mode. And one land for them may mean a lightning bolt, but one man for DFB here means another. You know. Javelin ears yeah, another to threat. take out a blocker. Um, it, it may be two mana for the Alio Pile, which is, which is you know, it's kind of an underrated card. When you're on mono white, Alio Pile is pretty nifty against a black deck. He's also got the Karmas in the side. It's, uh, it's, it's so funny for me to see because I play a lot of Swedish, right? So then I don't have uh -huh. access to Fallen Empires. And these decks okay. really get better when you have Fallen Empire access, right? It's, it, you can't, you can't. Come on, man. The orders, the orders are powerhouses. I love orders. Uh, I I really love Alio Pile. It seems like kind of a kind of a dud um, in traditional old school, but if you really look hard at Alio Pile, it, it solves a lot of problems for him. You know, it, it takes something out of the out of the way. He's he's got the Javelin Ears, Javelin Ears, and Alio Pile. I mean, that's a lightning bolt. Um, exactly yeah and it gives access to direct damage to every single deck right the ao pile yeah 
and and it, it allows you because one of the things that I've played uh, White Weenie as well because it's just so traditional, right? And one of the problems for me uh, was really trying to deal that those last points of damage when your opponent has control and you've kind of lost the race because he's not dead yet, but he's on two or on mm -hmm. three, and then I always like ah. Oh, I should just splash white for a bolt or something, but this shows with the AO pile, I guess. It gives you at least gives you the direct damage option. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm I'm surprised he didn't uh he didn't get a little bit sassier and throw in our Giving archaeologist there, right? I mean, how cool would that be? <laughs> that is but, really uh, cool. He's already doing some really some really ballsy moves, you know? Like he's chosen some three ofs. Uh, there's a, there's yeah. quite a few three ofs in here. He's got a single preacher main. He's got one in the side. He elected to use one crusade and two sneaky army of Allahs in the main. And he's got two extra crusades for the side, you know, just to make sure that he's not boosting his opponent. If his opponent's also on white. Um, uh, yeah, the whole I, I thought it was such an interesting decision to choose yeah. army of Allah over crusades. Of course, Army of Allah plus two plus O, oh, right? So it boosts it a little bit more. It's an instant, uh, but it's not a right. temporary. It's just a temporary boost. Whereas with Crusade, you get plus one plus one. Of course, enchantment. Yeah, so a temporary boost when he's swinging with three weenies. The Army of Allah becomes, you know, it it's like it's a huge. all it's lightning. At, you know, I mean, and it's it's pretty good card. I used to. I used to run around with Army of Allah a little bit in my white weenie decks back in the day, and I can tell you, you don't don't look don't overlook that card. It's 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 every bit as powerful as Crusade. And if you're expecting to go up against another white weenie deck, and you've got Army of Allah and they've got Crusade, I think you definitely have the advantage. Absolutely, that's a good point. And uh, in this deck, what I've noticed, we don't see a land tax. I would be very tempted to put a land tax in. Um, the land tax is pointed, isn't it? Or no? Uh, that could be the reason. Or maybe, yeah, think... maybe he thinks, okay, it's just another trick. And I just want to be, I, I, I was trying to think what Dave was thinking, because he's really good at building these type of decks. So I thought maybe yeah. he was thinking, I don't want to see any distractions, you know, like land tax is yeah. another plan. I have one plan. It, his, his plan is cast something, turn one, cast something, turn two, put the, put the opponent on their heels and then continue to press. And I think we see that just in his build. Um, there's some other really interesting dynamics that he put in the blacksmith being pro red, the white knight being pro black. And then he's got six banding creatures and the heroes and the pegasuses. So if he, or, sorry, he's also got the orders that are pro black. So he's got all these pro black creatures, pro red creatures and banding. And what that allows him to do is if someone's on red or someone's on black, he just runs them over because with banding, he gets to choose where that damage goes and he can assign it all to the creature who is pro black. So he attacks with a Benalish hero and an order of lit birth. And then he pumps the order, and the opponent blocks with the Sinjir Vampire. He assigns all the damage to the order, and his creatures survive, and the vampire dies. I mean, it's it's banding is it's a it's, great it's, trick. It's, it's so cool, right? And it's also nice that you see this. It's Repentant Blacksmith, right? That's the title, and it's two white. Um, mm -hmm. It's from Arabian Nights. Is it a one two or a two one? A one two. A one two. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I made it the two one in my head. I made it better. But it's got protection from red, which is yeah, as you say, it's really really good. And again, a card that yeah, I don't see that often. And I know it's it's quite common, right? In in X points and singleton, I think. Well, or I I think he kind of, I think earthquake forced his hand. If he wants to, if he wants to go low and he wants to come out fast and swinging, um, you know, a turn. A turn three earthquake against him is is most of the time going to be a three for one. So the repentant blacksmith is kind of hedging your bets, and I, I think it's a very very smart, uh, you know, pre game decision on his point to have something that survives the earthquake because beyond that he's only got the factories and the Pegasus. 
Good point. Good so, point. Yeah. It's it's a, it's it's a sneaky move, but uh, I'm I'm sure if we were to ask him after the fact in a in a post game interview or something, how how did the blacksmith work for you, or or we ask his opponents better yet, they're gonna say my earthquakes would have won me the game if it weren't for that damn blacksmith. But that's a good point. I think that's something that that Dave does really well is he, he just goes through the list and thinks, okay, what are possible threats and what kind of possible problems can I create for my opponent. Because sometimes mm -hmm. it, it feels for you that oh, I'm not doing something special, but your opponent is really like, oh man, that card, it's really in the way of me doing this and this and this. And, right. Right. I think Dave's really good at that. Um, one last thing I'd like to point out before moving on to the deck of uh, PJ Priestley, who's the other uh, finalist today, um, is I'd like to point out the Maze of If, because I think it's really cool that uh, Maze is just so diverse, right? A land from the dark, you can tap it and it takes target creature out of combat and it deals uh, no combat damage it receives no combat damage it's just out of there and the cool thing mm -hmm. is this used to be just a very defensive card it's got defense written all over it but uh, it's being used more and more offensively and i think in this deck too right yeah and i think yeah i mean i don't want to give more credit than than what's due but we have to give dave credit because he's been using maze of Earth in these weenie builds in both his his mono green decks that i've seen and then again here in the white um and he likes to use banding and he likes to use maze of Ith. and you know i don't want to say that he's trying to put one over on anybody but there's some definite trickery there you know when when you attack and and then they block and you bring your creature home or you reassign the damage uh and, and, you know, that's the benefits of uh, playing playing for a long period of time and uh, really fine-tuning your play style is that you start to, like, fall into these grooves. And I'm, I'm sure that he just operates the maze and his banding like, uh, you know, like, like an a old star. professional. Yeah, yeah, he's surgical with it, you know? And that's a good point you're making. Like, once you've... If you really kind of fall in love with a, a specific play style and then even though sometimes he plays green or sometimes because he plays different decks but because it's always that same you know kind of style of play that he enjoys so much he keeps getting better at it and better at it and right. yeah and i think just just to clarify this the cool thing about maze of if obviously is he can swing in with let's say four creatures his opponent has one big blocker so he would lose one of his creatures right but then he can yeah. in response use the maze take the creature that's being blocked out of the equation kind of save mm -hmm. his blocker and still three unblocked creatures getting through and he can then do the same thing the next turn and the next turn so he doesn't lose a creature every time he swings in another great thing about this maze is it is a land drop so for a lot of decks it's like i'm slowing myself down by playing the maze but look at the deck of dave i mean it's a weenie deck he doesn't need a lot of mana so he's like okay turn three i play my mace it's not that bad or turn four i don't really care yeah. about losing a land drop here um cool man so this is the deck of dave now uh let's take a look at the deck of pj and here we see the deck of PJ Priestley, and it's called Atox Mesh. I believe he actually made a deck tech video about this. I'll add it into the comments below so you can check out his YouTube channel. Uh, we see lots and lots of Atox, right, Ken? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we see lots of Atox and lots of brown. I mean, look at the whole left side of this photo. Um, it's pretty obvious what he's trying to do. He's going to, in my mind, the ideal hand, I mean, obviously, if we're not using restricted cards, we want to go, you know, Soul Ring, Felwar Stone, Mana Vault, and then turn two, just drop the hammer with a trike. But uh, I, I mean, I think it's just pretty straightforward. Uh, he's going to accelerate himself out with the fast artifact mana. He's going to clean up the little guys with the bolts and the chain lightnings bolts and chain lightnings are going to pair with the trikes to take out the big boys that the opponent might be able to cast and beyond that he is just kind of going mid-range and it, it it may look at first glance like he's going over the top big fatties but those mana vaults mean that it's that it's all mid-range i mean he's he's casting something beefy on turn four 
or earlier more often than not because of those mana vaults. Yeah, and I, I think mana vault is so good in a talk deck. You know, it's, oh, it's absolutely. so good. And it's, it's old school is one of the only formats where it, you can actually play for mana vaults. You know, this card is restricted in a lot of formats uh, just because you get such an acceleration. And, yeah. Right, because he, he can draw them. In. I'm just gonna explain a few obvious mechanics here. Obviously, you know when you tap mana vault, you get three colorless mana. So with the mana vaults, he's able to quickly cast uh, the Triskelion, the Tetravus, right? Because they're six, they're big beef boys. But like you say, because of the mana vault, it's turned into a mid range. You can drop them early, and then the problem mm -hmm. with mana vault is every time it stays tapped during your upkeep, you get a damage. But hey, there's the Atok. You can sack your mana vault to the Atok, and it gets plus two, plus two. So you actually get a bonus. It's like a mini giant growth. So yeah, that's just really strong, right? Yeah. The Atok and Mana Vault, it's like they're married. Yeah, right. and um, one, I, I mean, I haven't watched PJ's deck tech because I didn't want to like contaminate my commentary, but uh, one thing that he can do that's kind of nifty is if he already knows that the Juggernaut, uh, it must attack each turn. If he already knows that the Juggernaut is is going to run into a Pixie, you know, he can he can sacrifice the juggernaut to the atog uh so he can attack with the juggernaut and the atog if the opponent decides to defend with a pixie the juggernaut he will simply sacrifice it to the atog and actually push through two more damage so there is there is some ability to negate the only drawback of juggernaut and then also get the benefit um and obviously the su chi has a benefit when it sacks to the atog because it powers up his fireball um the yeah Tetris, I, I i think that's uh, so cool about into, uh about the su plus, chi, eight, right? plus eight you know like so yeah. i mean it it is what it is he's he's doing he's doing some normal things but he's doing them at a high level and i mean if you look at the deck he's got four ofs across the board so he's he's really consistent and then um it, it almost looks like he's not even using any points because he doesn't have his uh, his points set up. But I think his pointed cards are going to be the Factories, the Soul Ring, the, the Maze, and the Wheel of Fortune. So he's allocated his points like uh, pretty thoughtfully. I think maybe the Maze was just a throw-in, uh, one-point card. I don't know what else he would have chosen in red, but... Uh, I like it. It's 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 clean and it it looks like it's gonna just consistently deliver the beats. I agree with that that word you're using there. It's clean, kind of meaning it's clear what he wants to do, and and at the same time, there's a lot of there are a lot of different ways that he can go at it. And I I think again, Mace is just gonna be in some cases maybe an all star because the the problem with a talk for opponents is you know you can sack an artifact whenever you want to, right? So already you're discussing the juggernaut move, so he attacks then blockers are chosen and before damage is dealt like let's say the pixie example so the opponent chooses to block the juggernaut with the pixie and then before damage is dealt uh you know um, pj can choose to sacrifice the juggernaut to the atok pumping the atok making it bigger and then let's say i don't know something happens out of nowhere he can always pull the atok back or pull whatever back with the maze of if it's just it's such a diverse mm -hmm. card um, cool. And yeah, then, and, and what I wanted to say, just because I'm, I'm always liking like using the mana from Suchi, because uh, this is a format with mana burn. Right. Or, right. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm just curious to see is PJ gonna get burned by his own uh, Suchi this time? Uh, is that gonna happen? And also, I just like what you mentioned that he can sack the Suchi in a second main or first if he wants to, and then use those four colorless mana to feed into maybe a huge fireball. To kind of end the mm -hmm. job and he is playing against mono white so that means there will be no counter spell going on on the side of uh, of dave so when we're looking at both of these decks uh, ken who do you think is your favorite gosh um and and not in terms so of just, what you, what's your favorite deck but who do you think is most likely to win this god i so here's the thing right like the card that i'm really looking at the best card in pj's deck against dfb i feel is the trike um because there's just nothing dfb can do uh to prevent the trike from three for wanting him 
And then also <laughs> oh, no. winding up with a one one that he doesn't have any protection against, right? So he goes, he goes, if PJ casts a trike, he goes, Okay, I'm gonna shoot your Pegasus out of the air, I'm gonna shoot your Savannah Lions, and I'm gonna shoot your summoning sick acacia and javelin ears. And then the trike turns around and and blocks, you know, an order or something, right? Like that is just that, trike is trike sick. Is trike is sick. Oh, so, it, it's so inevitable that trike defeats a weenie deck. I see it very, very hard for DFB to get a handle on it. Now, after sideboard, Good I point. think that DFB may have the advantage because if DFB is able to, you know, catch a Suchi with a divine offering. When uh, May Mishra's factory isn't in play for PJ, that's an eight point life swing. Wow. It's a one that's for a good one point. trade and an eight point life swing, which against a weenie deck that's just press, 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 that that could be the end of it. So oh God, I don't know. I think I think w if there's no sideboards, I think PJ has the has the advantage, but it's really hard to pick against a white deck when you're running artifacts, you know, because DFB has a dust to dust. He's got a divine offering. He can bring in a couple plows, which is five points against a juggernaut. I mean, that's that. I, yeah. I, I yeah. don't know. I, I think the plows are, I don't, it, it's tough. It's, it's going to be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to watching this. And I think just, it's, it's so good that you mentioned trike because it's such a good card. And that's the reason that people have started playing artifact blast again, which I think is a really cool card from the antiquities, oh, a red yeah. card that counters an artifact. Because in, in that sense, Trike kind of reminds me of the creatures we see in Magic now that when they come into play, they already do something and they have value. And obviously they mm -hmm. did that because removal is so strong, right? So yeah, it, it kind of makes a creature better that it always has something to do. And that's it with Trike. As soon as it's on the board, you know, if you disenchant it in response, you can, you know, move those counters everywhere. So the best way to deal with the trike is to counter it. And of course, Dave can't. So yeah, I, I agree with your analysis. I think trike is really, really strong. And after sideboard, you're right, man. He, he gets a lot of answers in his deck. So yeah, it's going to be exciting. I, uh, uh, sh shall we go to the games? Here, yeah, I have a prediction. Okay. I haven't watched the matches, but I have a prediction. Go for it. I'm going to go with the, with the Sheevan being the uh being the the game breaking play the top deck shivan i think will be and this is just out out of the blue man i i really feel like a top deck shivan is 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 going to be something it's it's going to happen that I, that I will be why. sweet I man feel it. i hope combat damage is going to be the decider in this one definitely but yeah we'll we'll we'll, we'll see okay so um yeah let's go to the games uh let's uh, let's check out how this final is going to end up game number one and here we go we've got dave uh, he's taking a mulligan it seems he's on the left pj's on the right uh we're not sure yet who's uh going to start here in game one of the finals oh it looks like pj so can we see oh quick starts here by both players or i should actually say dave And what is he playing there, Ken? Can you see it? There's quite that's some players. That's an Atog. Ah, yeah. I of mean, course. that's the only thing he's got at two. So, and then he attacks. There we go. The Pendlehaven, the green Pendlehaven in a mono white deck. And it's a free attack. He's going to tap the Pendlehaven, get in for two. This is a great start for Dave, right? Um, I mean, yeah, the Atog holds a lot of stuff home. And. You know, sacrificing artifacts isn't free. Atog is fantastic, but he still doesn't want to block with either Atog. He's got the maze, so he's going to be able to send one of these guys home. But he's still going to take two damage, and Atog does need to eat something. Yeah, he's going he to take two regardless. Block. He could double block the lion and trade a Atog for a lion. Up. Oh. He's going to send him one and take two. Or was he blocking it? I believe he was blocking it. Yeah, he was blocking oh. it. Yeah, so he's trading. Yeah, so he just Atog. traded for the lion. And he sent home the javelinier. 
more pressure here and from Dave. Still coming. Two javelin ears is fantastic for DFB. He has to love that, right? Because now he can kill that ATOG just by value. Fowler stone. Okay, so then he's, he, he could force PJ to eat the Felber stone, but he probably doesn't want to. I, I almost think that it's worth it. Yeah, I'm thinking now, ah, this is going to be such an interesting combat phase to kind of see what he's going to do. Well, he's got the Pendlehaven, so he could attack with both. I mean, there's there's just like so many variables at this point. Exactly, like there are multiple lines. It's interesting. It looks like he's going to tap Pendlehaven to cast something. Ah, disenchant on the Felwer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, he's forcing okay, the so issue. He sacks it to the Atog, and then he shoots it in response. Wow. So okay. he says, "Okay, you sacrifice it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it, and then nothing happens. And then what's he gonna cast? A nothing. I think that's okay, the so only thing that's missing for this turn, right? You would have loved to see for Dave then to put extra pressure on the board. And it looks uh, like uh, PJ is going quite slow, right? Not finding any of his uh, mana vaults. Well." Sometimes that's how it works, you know. Um, it doesn't mean that DFB is going to let off the gas pedal. So he's kind of making a choice. Am I trying to attack my my opponent? Is not casting anything. Should I get in while I can? Yeah, and of course, PJ is waiting till the last moment to use the mace, so he knows... Uh, what PJ the has himself is used 17 on. and uh, DFB has look they have a life discrepancy total do you see that yeah 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 I see that Dave's, or, Dave's or got him on 15 I think they're discussing it right now one he's saying wait I attacked you One thing I love about old school is like your opponent is more likely to tell you, hey man, you took one extra point of damage than you should have. Uh, you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah, that's, that's really one cool. thing I love about old school is that your opponent will say like, hey, you, I should be, you should be one higher, you know? <laughs> exactly, because actually PJ had his life total lower and they're discussing it. And Dave said, doesn't want to go to 14 without first discussing, okay, then what's that extra point of damage? What did I miss? Yeah. Which is really yeah. nice to see. Uh, there's the blacksmith. And the blacksmith. That blacksmith could be a problem. I was just expecting... Oh. Sorry, I was just expecting PJ to by now play a Suchi or a Juggernaut with all that mana. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I can't imagine what... He doesn't have bolts. He doesn't have chain... He, he doesn't want to waste a bolt or a chain lightning. Maybe he's got a couple of chain lightnings and he doesn't want to waste one quote unquote waste it on a javelin ear. I mean it's hard to imagine what PJ's got in his hand. Maybe he's got a lot of land. Could be as well. I think he's only got how many cards in hand? They're only one, I think. Now he's gonna draw two. Remember, oh, Dave God. also took a mulligan, right? So he went actually went down a card, but it doesn't feel like that when you're looking at this match. Oh trike? Oh, ho, there's the trike. There it is, right? But oh, if the man. trike so Oh, see the no, oh, no, no! no. You let him untap. Yeah, obviously. I think I would have shot those one ones me, right away. Me too, because just to clarify, the Pendlehaven was tapped, so that's why it was such a good moment for PJ to use to try very aggressively. Um, oh. On the other hand, he's not going to let him swing. He's simply going to send it back with the maze, the one that's going to get the Pendlehaven on, right, and then maybe kill a creature in the process if or... they. Or he just blocks the blacksmith. Does he say go? He does. Ooh. He does. Interesting. Does that portend an army of Allah next turn? I think it does. Or he wants to do something with that Pegasus banding ability. Because picture, he can cast Army of Allah. Oh, okay. Chain Lightning. He's getting the Pegasus. Okay. By the way, I Earned mean... It. I told you he had a bunch of Chain He had to have Chain Lightnings, right? Like, he was I just agree. waiting for something useful. There is a Suchi, I think. Ooh, oh, we, no. The game is changing. It's kind of getting Not away from Dave. Not for Dave. 
if Dave could have, could have cast an Armageddon somewhere before the trike hit the table, he would have been golden. Oh, yeah, it would have been over. Oh, maybe he was... If if Dave is, is, had been sandbagging in Armageddon, he is upset with himself right now because it's way too once it that's the thing about trike once it hits the board the armageddon is like well yeah. fuck what what i mean shoot what now it's it's <laughs> <laughs> look look at pj go by the way he's he's going aggro now again and that kind of shows his confidence yeah he is... says i'm gonna i'm gonna take a four point bite out of you you can't block me oh man and again you know, I almost, again I the annoying thing of the maze right blocked. I think I would have activated the factory. There oh, we see him untap oh, after damage. No. See? Yeah, he can always maze. He can do some things. I think I would have blocked, but you know, DFB knows his deck. He knows what he's trying to do here. But it looks like he's drawn dead. Dead in the water, and he was doing so well. And now I think uh, PJ, just with that one track, he's got so much control. And of course, that maze early in the game gives gives him so so many possibilities. I wonder mm -hmm. if he's going to swing in now again, kind of see what happens. Playing that early maze, though, meant that the track didn't come down until turn seven. True. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I think it was hoping to draw into a mana vault, probably, when he made that decision. Yeah. Okay, One. so here's a double attack. Interesting. It looks like he's pumping the factory, right? The factory can also be tapped to pump itself to a 3-3. Three, three. Right. So he's going to block... I think he blocks the Suchi. No, he has to block the Trek. Is he blocking the Trek or the Suchi? I think the big problem for here, here is Mace, right? Because I'm expecting, you know, PJ to kind of then take whatever he blocks out of the combat with the Mace. Right, yeah. Oh, we're going to see more shenanigans. Oh, no. Lightning, Lightning bolt. bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, of course, bolt. what you're afraid of. Oh, man. This is so uh, bad for Dave. Because now he's going to lose both Javelineers, I believe. Yep. And he's, he's going to take four. At, what's he looking at? What do you think Dave is looking at? Maybe Army he's of looking Allah. At an, he's looking at a... I mean, who knows? That's what I... That's what I put him on like earlier. The problem is that in, re in, 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 in response, then PJ could have taken off the counters and killed both the Javelin yeah. as well. Like there's not, there wasn't a way out of there for him, I believe. He's looking at an Armageddon and he's saying, I can't possibly get in when my opponent's winning on board. <laughs> or maybe he's looking at a his second Pendle Haven. Um, yeah, I was, I, I was thinking he was looking like an instant card, right? Because it was the combat phase. So I was thinking maybe... No, nah, he's looking at his second Pendlehaven. I mean... Yeah, I, I have a, a Pendlehaven and an Army of Allah. That's what I'd put him on. I mean... This... Oh, man. This 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 game really shifted. I mean, it's all <laughs> yeah, PJ from here. And I don't see Dave recovering from this. No. I mean, does he does he play? Oh man, I'm so bad at looking at deck lists. Does he play? He doesn't balance? have balance. Okay. No. Okay. I knew you were gonna ask that. Yeah, he <laughs> said that. Ah, right. Is it? Because you're hitting me. You're hitting me for four, no matter what. And then you're gonna trike me for three more. He's yeah. like, this is this is it. And you got a a a, a pile over there, sleeved up lightning bolts like it's over but that's the thing with tri -crack. in the end it it counts almost double because you always have to add the plus three so and you're going to take the damage this turn almost die oh yeah and there's the plus three damage in the second yeah. main or whenever after damage is being dealt by the trike and uh wow man what a, what a shift it looked like he was winning dave he got pj to 10 and yep. then it changed so now they're well, going to go to their... I told you, man. Trike is... <laughs> it's, like, it's the star of PJ's deck, at least in this matchup. It's by far PJ's best card. That's so... Uh, it's so cool. It's so cool to kind of like see a card that costs six being so decisive uh, against like a deck where you, when you think of White Weenie, it's just too quick. It should have it been too quick. Um, I think if... 
like you said, if DFE had, you know, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, oh, what a party we'd have. But as you alluded to, if DFB had found his Geddon, it it would have he it would have slammed the door on PJ. But instead, PJ cast a decisive trike that went the distance on his own turn seven, which man, you know, that's that just is just brutal. So DFB's sideboarding in his artifact hate yeah so um think... you know what we'll, we'll let these players sideboard and i'll just fast forward a little bit and we'll catch back up with them in uh, in game number two so it's one up for pj game number two here we go so it's dave on the play after losing that first one against pj and um what do you think he uh, he boarded in ken against those uh, trikes well he's he's gotta put in those crusades it's uh it 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 makes him a little bit more mid-range but it means that the trike can only really shoot one of dave's creature per uh you know per carrier right because that's that's, that's that, a very good point it kind of buffs their toughness right in the meanwhile this game is really taking off quick by the way uh, we already see two chains by pj uh trying to remove some of the threats from dave a uh, banana yes. hero here. There's a Pegasus past turn, I guess. Wow. They're playing fast, Ken. Well, that's, you know, they, I think both their decks are designed to play fast. They're actually aggro decks at heart. I mean, anything that's running. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. There it is. There's the fatty. And now we're going to see. I mean, we predicted Dave. Okay, there's a disenchant. Disenchant. That's four. That's four. Because it's mana oh. burn. And yeah, he goes to 15, and then he takes two more, he goes to 13, and then blink of an eye. So this is a good example where Suchi is actually working against PJ here uh, instead of for him. Um, Dave is stuck at two, two lands, though, so I wonder if PJ is tempted to use the strike. Probably wants to have six for trike, right? If he has a trike. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he wants to... He ooh. goes strip. Yeah, he saw that miss land drop. Now he, he wants to take advantage. Stone. So I wonder how much... Uh, Ooh, another land, by the way, from Dave. So maybe he was doing it on purpose. No, he wants to go yeah, to... Yeah, maybe he was... I don't know that he missed a land drop to draw out the strip. I mean, but sure. Uh, for four, so he's playing the aggressor. I it, like it. Then I think he's probably going to play another creature, right? Oh, he's playing a factory. I was actually expecting maybe to play another Suchi or even better for him, a trike uh, for PJ, that is. There we see an so attack saying, in a band. I'm banding these guys. Banding. Go ahead. I'll trade the factory for a hero. Man, I want to play against this deck. I play Tolaria. I can just take care of the band. Take it apart in the upkeep. <laughs> You played Talaria. Yeah, you're gonna remove the banding ability during yeah, the up. Yes. Give me a break! That's the worst <laughs> land ever, dude. It's cool, man. I got a nice altered Talaria. No, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But you know what? I'm gonna send you a signed Seafarer's Quay and see how that works out for you. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I actually I don't know that card, man. Oh, so all of the uh, all the beautiful. The legends, uh, all your blue oh, legends. Oh, you mean the legendary land? Sorry, legends. sorry, I know you know that. I, mean? I know that card. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. that card. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. I have them as well. They're beautiful, awful, but the art they're is gorgeous. Gorgeous. I think that they're all by Tom Wanastrand, who's who's a underappreciated uh, four horseman artist, by the way. Oh, there we see a swing. This game is pretty, pretty interesting. And, and and again, I think Dave is really using that mace. The reason he can swing in almost without thinking is he can always use his mace to get a creature back to safety. And he's now really looking at, okay, PJ, what do you want to do with your ATOC? Do you want to block? Maybe feed an artifact to it? You know, what is your plan? I guess he's blocking with it right now, right? So he's going to block the band, the White Knight and the Benalish Hero. Army of Allah! Wow. Are you seeing that, Ken, that army? Yes. I had my connection interrupted. The army 
the yeah, RME works this? also works great with uh, with the first strike ability. Yeah, oh, it it does for sure. What is PJ now going to do? Because I think he declared blockers. He said, "I'm going to block with the Atok, going to block the band," and then in response, Dave casted the Army of Allah, and now he's going to feed tons of artifacts to it, giving it. It looks like plus four, plus four, so it's going to be a, a five six. And that would mean that the Atok dies and both of the creatures... No, because he can choose how he wants to... No, he just sends it all to the hero or yeah. the knight or however he decides to do it. Because because of banning, this is of course the cool thing about banning, uh, Dave gets to decide where the damage goes to from the Atok. Atok Okay, dies. so he's... He thinks better of it. He he examines the opportunities and he says, okay, you're taking three. You got a five. Okay. I think this is a good decision from PJ, right? Because, I mean, he could sack two artifacts. His Atox still dies and, you know, Dave only loses maybe one creature max. Or could he have taken the, that, even that creature then back from combat or out of combat? No, because then the creature um, wouldn't die anymore. No, okay. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. What is that? What does Dave have over there? Is that a maze? Yeah, that's a maze. Yeah, that maze gives him so much. Oh, it it does do some amazing some amazing things. <laughs> Woo! You're on fire, oh, man. We got jokes. <laughs> Maybe it's nice for people to know we, we're in two different time zones. So for me it's early morning. For Ken, it's Friday evening. So he's Yeah, it's a, the, the bottle of wine is almost gone, my friend. There we see the Crusade, uh, by the way, that you talked about coming in, maybe from the sideboard. He only plays one main, so that this is huge. It's looking really good for, for Dave. I'm a bit surprised he's not attacking in a uh, band here as well. Um, yeah, me too. Because he, he can band them up having a 5-5. Five five. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he's but... afraid of the Chaos Orb. Oh, because of course, because then PJ can or flip an orb on one of the two creatures. Yeah, he can flip an orb and he can two for one by blocking. Yeah. Then again, he can right? then take it out of the equation with the maze. Anyway, it looks like PJ is going to flip. And there are not enough mana open here for Dave to respond with a disenchant. Because I think, right? Because PJ's tapping the Chaos Orb. So it looks like he's actually going to use it. What would be your target? Uh, the Crusade. Okay. The The Crusade, because it, it, the, I mean, you can, he could get the Pegasus. But oh, five okay. turns, I feel like he should be able to draw something in five turns to deal with the Pegasus. Because he could draw a Trike, he could draw... Yeah, the crusade. I felt like the crusade was the was the right choice there. Yeah, because it buffs his entire entire army. So yeah, you're probably right there. I was yeah, I was kind of thinking. I think just find the maze such an annoying card. <laughs> I would almost be tempted to flip on the maze. <laughs> well, I know he wanted to get the maze of it, but the crusade was the more important threat because the crusade means that he's on a three turn clock. Yeah, exactly. He's too low to to focus on the maze right now. So yeah, you're right. That's a very good decision. And he's got you know two, I mean? two it, factories there, by the way. With his top deck opportunities, he's got he's got a you know he's got eight bolts, so he can he can deal with that Pegasus. He's got fireballs, uh, he's got plenty of trikes. He he can deal with the Pegasus. The Crusade would be a constant thorn in his side if he's not able to address that issue immediately. And it's interesting because even though PJ is now going to two, you know, you may think okay, this game is played, but it's it's not. It as soon as PJ has an answer for the Pegasus. It's going to be very close. Oh, a big uh, fireball game. blows all those creatures oh. out. If he top sacks yeah. a fireball, he can split it. But now, if Dave can find one of his AO piles, he wins this one. Oh, that'd be a wonderful win, Con. PJ's on one. Oh, man. That's got to be it, right? I, I think so. Fireball! Oh, oh 
fireball. Oh no! Does he have enough to ball what him I out? Say? I said a fireball turns everything around. Where's he your goes, okay, where's I'm your achievement dragon? Can you promise us achievement dragon? We're seeing a fireball. I, <laughs> I told you. Oh, okay, so he goes. He goes. I go one for the ball. I go one two. For the knight, I go one to split it. I go one, two for the hero. I go one to split it. I go one, two for the Pegasus. So he goes, I'll do six damage split three ways. He wipe wipes the, board. the entire board. Oh, this is brutal. I'll swing and you'll send it home. And it's a new game. Well, it's not. I mean, because he's at one and DFB's at 12. I mean, so if, all if, he if, needs is another Pegasus. Or an Aopile. Oh, or or what if he, a disenchant now on the Suchi or divine offering. No, he took out the alio piles. That's what he had to have taken out because the alio piles are they're good against Mishra's, but wouldn't DFB take out the alio pile for divine offering? Or yeah, true. You have to take something out, of crusade, course. Crusade. You know what I mean? He's got to yeah, take yeah, something yeah. out. I hope not. I just want. <laughs> no, he took out the alio piles. I bet you, dude. I bet. Oh man. Oh, that's... here's the. Beats for six. He goes one turn for you, my friend. Okay, okay. okay. On the on the Suchi, wow. right? Oh, but he can pump it into his factories. By the way, this is a really um, nice thing when you play with fa another thing. Why factory is a good card? The mana from the Suchi, those four mana, you can use it just to activate your factories multiple times. So you can spend four mana, sink it into one factory. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that? Factory is good. I know it's a, a it's a bold it's a bold statement. It's a bold statement. <laughs> I didn't say I'm a fan. I said it's a good card. I'm actually <laughs> I, I play I play mono blue can and you know why I play with four factories in mono blue to deal to deal sacrifice to draw a card. Oh, just no, to, deal to deal with, with other factories because I'm playing blue. It's really <laughs> difficult to deal with lands when you're on blue. Oh, there's an attack. But I oh, think, God. well, actually, let me put it this way. I think Mishra's Factory is a very interesting card because it's so incredibly versatile, right? They're so he sends, the, he sends that factory home. He taps that factory yeah. to boost the other yeah, factory. It's so annoying. He it's blocks so annoying. the A-Dog. Give me a break. PJ is... He's winning this, man. He's winning this. He's pulling he was on victory one. from the jaws of defeat. Oh, oh my god um, this is an interesting armageddon by the way um because it leaves the atok with two artifacts to eat for lunch um and and we see that one blacksmith beautifully signed by the way is it drew tucker oh come on a oh, maze maze top deck that was a top deck maze you have to know that was a top deck maze oh man oh man oh this is a Oh no, not on the maze. I wouldn't say disenchant maze, but that's not possible. <laughs> I would I would love that. So DFB is playing the old spellground play mat. It looks gray, possibly. I think so. Or here's, brownish. Could be brown as well, right? But you just don't see it. Here's the second threat. That blacksmith, man. I don't know what, 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 what playmat PJ is playing. I don't know. It's uh it's it's a it's the Black Wrath of God. Or is it Rat no, it's the newest art of Wrath of God. It's the it's the new I don't know. What's wrong like, with the old art of Wrath of God? It's fantastic. It's, there's a there's a dude's butt hanging out, man. Haven't you <laughs> I looked love it, at man. it? There's, there's <laughs> guys like wearing a thong or something. I like old school art, man, because it's got like little goofy stuff like that in it. And it's got the face, right, of God itself in there as well. It's classic Clint it's it's classic Quentin Hoover. I I Oh another I never... Armageddon, by the way. Oh, this is int it's really interesting. Give me a break. <laughs> I mean And then he and then he drops a planes. He's finding a lot of lands, which is which is nice, and I, I, he attacks. I, yeah. I mean, oh, he's taking the Four. damage. What is yeah, he yeah, afraid? Yeah, he has to. But what, what is he? Afraid? Why not block? Is he afraid of like uh, swords or something? From Dave's side. Blaze of glory, righteousness. I don't know. Why didn't he block? 
I mean, if he has if he has a sword, let him use it. Whatever, just block and because uh, he can sack the Felwer. Oh no, it's protection from red. It, oh, it, of it course. Uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Stupid. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, here yeah. we are commentating. Amateur hour. <laughs> amateur hour. <laughs> okay. Let's see. But anyway, that's actually wow. You can actually see that pro red working for Dave. Interesting, aggressive move by PJ, and he's now on six. Does that mean, ooh, strip mine, uh -oh. bolt in response, I think. Bolt him. He's going to bolt. bolt in response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Three, he's switching it. He's switching. I think the, because of that um, aggressive attack by the ATOC earlier that PJ has another chain or bolt in hand because he really wanted to put him on, on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Top decking a mountain. The thing oh. is, man, first of all, congratulations to you, PJ, and you played a really, really good game. And there's going to be a but here. But, I mean, Dave, so much misfortune, right? Well... In the second game, not the first game. I I don't know, man. I, I think, uh, you know, you can look back on the match... And you can say one player had misfortune, one player had good fortune. I I felt like uh, things came up for PJ, but, you know, that he didn't get a trike in game two. No, no, I, and... I, I, I don't want to go as far as, uh, you know, PJ won. He won it fair and square. He played good magic. I'm just saying for in the second game, it felt like, you know, Dave constantly had that Armageddon trick going. And yeah. every time... Um, PJ had a mountain or had an answer for it, you know, um, well, Dave got which is part of the game. Uh, Bard got the Geddens in game two. He didn't get the Geddens in game one. PJ got the trike in game one. He didn't see the trike in game two. So I'm going to call that a wash. I, I think that if DFB had seen the Geddon in game one, he would have won it. If PJ had seen the trike in game two it would have been a much different story i don't think that either player steamrolled they they were both put into top deck mode and yeah, true, as true, usually true. as usually happens when you're in top deck mode the deck with the with the highest with the longest legs with the higher gear that's I, the deck that prevails. You I know? thought I you mean, were going to say, usually when you're in top deck mode, the deck with the bolt wins. I mean, it's just, it, it's so interesting to see. This is what I talked about in the in the deck deck section of this video. Yeah. What frustrates me with Mono White from time to time is you got your opponent on one, right? You mm -hmm. should win this game, but you're missing, missing that finisher. And that's what we see with PJ. His opponent's on nine. He gets one yeah. swing in with that ATOC for three second to Felwer. And then, hey, you're on six, and then you start sweating as the opponent because you know I'm playing against the mono red deck. One chain and a bolt, and I'm done, right? Oh, and look. That's what happens. So Sorry. Dave shows what he sideboarded out. He's, I told you, he sideboarded out both the Alio piles. He sideboarded out some weenies. He needed those javelineers for that one point. Ah! He, he put in both of the... Uh, Crusades. Pause it right here. Let's look at this, if you don't mind. Sure thing, man. So, I mean, yeah, it is actually, yeah, you already mentioned it, right? If there's so much that Dave can board in, and then it's a tough part. What am I going to board out? So that what what do you notice, Ken? Part. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I thought that the Crusades were crucial to board in. And he swapped out one army of Allah. He brought in the plow. He brought in he brought in both his artifact destruction spells in the divine offering and the dust to dust. I think that he probably wishes he had a a second dust to dust in the side. It looks like another disenchant that's like heavily <laughs> signatured. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, and that's a that's and what a DJ nice... bring in? Can you see what he brought in? He brought in, I think two two quakes and two two discs. Yeah, he didn't see either one of those. 
No, that's true. And, and, and Quay can still be very, very strong against that, Dave. Obviously, it doesn't take the blacksmith, it doesn't take the flyers, but there's still so much left that it does get. And, and it deals damage at the same time. So it's really nice multifunctional. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that you were pretty accurate when you said uh, Dave drew fairly poorly in comparison with the draws of PJ. But, you know, I asked Loki, uh, you know, how PJ had been performing in the recent events. And Loki told me that PJ has been like top eighting everything and he's been using this same deck. So much like DFB, PJ knows exactly what he's doing and he knows exactly how to do it. And when he encounters something like a white weenie deck, he knows how to combat it. And so he stayed calm. He got busted down to like one life. He got busted down to 10 true, life. True, and he just true. Stuck to his game plan and he knew exactly when to attack with that ATOG to flip a... 3-2 into a 2-3 and a victory. So I, I think, I think that's the... Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Congratulations, PJ. Well, well done. And like I said in the intro, he's made a nice deck deck video. Go check that out. It's in the description below um, where you can see all the ins and outs of Atox Smashing. I, yeah, it's the advantage, right, of saying, okay, this is my deck. I really want to get the best in playing this deck. I want to tweak it to, you know, till it's perfect the best it can be and also me as a player that i can pilot it the best i can be and i think it's exactly as you say pj knows what to do against oh i'm playing mono white or he probably knows what to do when he's playing i don't know robots or when he's playing the deck he probably knows what button to push when and and as you say he said really cool he went down to one life was like no it's still gonna work i haven't lost yet right yeah. and, and 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 that's value there because and and I, i'm one of those People, I don't know about you, Ken, but I just like so many different decks that I end up playing so many different decks. But there is a price to pay for that. Is this you're just no, not that's, as good? That's how I am. Also, I want to. Yeah. I always want to build something new. I enjoy crafting, but that's one of the things that that's beautiful about old school magic is that you have the opportunity to just do whatever you want to do, craft a really cool deck, and people will give you kudos for having yeah. a totally trash deck using psychic venom <laughs> you know and then and then at the same time like you know guys like these these cutthroat sharks are just gonna rise cream of the crop these, these guys are both piloting decks that they know very well and and that's why they're here and and uh definitely man. To these gentlemen definitely you know? all credits to these guys and um yeah, also I think sometimes people say, okay, I built this deck and it didn't perform, so it's a bad deck. And then I feel like, well, I mean, look at these guys who, like like we talked about the play style, right? Who play the same play style, so then you get really, really good at it, right? So just yeah. you need to put the hours into a deck to really become good and great and, and make it to finals like these. It's not always, oh, my deck's bad or I need that one really expensive card and that's why it's not performing. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and I think that, and that's what, that's a testament. That's exactly a testament to PJ's uh, persistence. You know, like he, 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 he's been piloting the same deck event after event. And he says, I know that this is good. I should be winning. And, and he, and he probably looks back on, on some of the losses in past events. And he says to himself, if only I'd made a different decision, at, yeah. at this point in the match, I, I likely would have been, uh, you know, the victor. And so he, he he cumulatively, those lessons led him to this championship, which is, which is fantastic. It is very well played and uh, it's a, it's a fabulous deck. And I'm, I'm actually, when, when I'm building my next one, I'm going to be looking at his and saying, how the hell am I going to beat this thing? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's going to be tough, definitely. But with that, we're going to finish this video off. So thank you very much, Ken, for joining me for this one. It's been great fun. Also, thank you, uh, thanks to Luki for organizing all this. And if you want to get in on the action, uh, the link to the Facebook group is, again, in the description below. You can join for free. You can join these tournaments for free. Uh, it's a great, fun community. You can get to know more about X Points. They also have their own YouTube channel. Again, links in the description below. So if you want to see more different types of decks, Check it out. There's a lots and lots of variety because of this X point system point list. So if you're into that, if you're into seeing a lot of different decks, this could also be the format for you. 
Um, thank you guys for watching. I'm just going to mention a few things that you can do to help the channel out. So if you like this content, there are three things that you can do that are absolutely free of charge. Woohoo! You can like the video, click the thumbs up button. You can leave a comment um, and you can also become a subscriber. So if you're new to the channel, this is your first video here on Timmy Talks. Welcome. Um, happy to have you here. Hit that subscribe button. All those three things really help the channel go uh, grow. Then you can also become a patron via Patreon so you can sponsor the channel. Uh, and you can do that by clicking on the info card that's appearing right now. Talking about that, uh, let's take a look at the end scroll and take a look at the fantastic, the amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!